Hello doctors welcome back to Pilots of Medicine today we are going to continue with the biochemistry base series it's the fourth video in this series and uh, the next couple of videos will be uh, we'll be starting with physiology and pathophysiology base so stay tuned and keep on sharing the videos and subscribing we are almost at uh, 200 subscribers uh, so let's let's begin without without any further delay So the thirty-first question is that a patient presents high activity of LDH one, LDH two, aspartate amino transferase, uh, creatinine phosphokinase. So they are asking in what organ is the development of pathological process the most probable? So what what you need to understand in this question is that in any type of cell injury, may it be a cell of heart, may it be a cell of liver, may it be a cell of brain. Uh, when the cell is injured the intracellular contents of the cell they get into the blood they get released into the blood so there are many enzyme which are in a cell you all know enzymes are part of the cytosol so when the cells are injured the enzymes are released into the blood so uh, these enzymes which are specific to those cells for example if there is an injury to the liver and there is uh, the cells of the liver the hepatocytes they release the liver enzymes into the blood we can find these enzymes in increased quantity or increased levels in the blood so that way we can determine biochemically using laboratory tests that if these enzymes are elevated then there must be some injury to the liver cells so similarly in myocardial infarction where there is a death of the myocardium or the myo myo um, uh, the the cells of the myocardium there the some enzymes of the uh, cardiac tissue are released into the blood for example these enzymes are creatinine kinase aspartate amino transferase and lactate dehydrogenase specifically first and second uh, isoenzyme of lactate dehydrogenase and uh, ckmb form of creatinine kinase so you can see over here that ck or creatinine kinase the first one to be elevated in in when there is a onset of myocardial attack and then aspart aspartate transfer is elevated and then ldh is elevated so this is how you can determine using laboratory tests it can be used as a biochemical marker for myocardial infarction in the question these cardiac enzymes are elevated so we can think that there must be a injury to the myocardial tissue or initial stage of myocardium infarction understood good let's go to the next one okay so the 32nd question is that the buffer capacity of the blood was decreased in the worker due to exhausting muscle work entry of what substance acid substance of to the blood can this uh, state be explained by so when you do excessive exercise your body produces lactate the muscles produce lactate uh, the muscle cells produce lactate the rbcs the brain and other tissues when there is insufficient oxygen for glycolysis so this process is known as anaerobic glycolysis so excess lactate in the blood can lead to lactic acidosis which was evident in our patient so this is uh, anaerobic glycolysis combined with curry cycle in which the muscles produce lactate and this lactase goes to the blood and then from via the blood it goes to the liver and in the liver it is produced back into glucose with the help of gluconeogenesis so this process of converting lactate back to the glucose and combined with the anaerobic glycolysis is called as curry cycle so understood that lactate is produced we have all read about this in our uh, pre medical classes during our school time that muscle cramps and all so let's go to the next one so next question is that while examining the child the doctor revealed symmetric cheek roughness diarrhea dysfunction of the nervous system so the asking lack of what food components caused it so remember vitamin b3 is called as niacin or nicotinic acid is also known as preventive papillary preventing factor of goldberg uh, i'll tell you a small story this man goldberg was a scientist 
who did a very good experiment or a very interesting experiment so he went to a, a prison and what he, he did was in the prison he asked the prisoners to help him with the experiment so the prisoners were given some incentive i don't know so what was the experiment that some of the prisoners were given a diet that contained only maize maize and some wheat or something uh no not even wheat some maize and some meat so the others were given proper diet so after a few days it was found that all of the prisoners who got a diet of maize developed some symptoms of diarrhea dermatitis etc etc so the maize you all should know that maize is or corn we call it is not does not contain proper amount of tryptophan tryptophan amino acid so from there mr goldberg concluded that vitamin b3 which is made from tryptophan in the body so via the tryptophan metabolism kynurene pathway we talked about it before so tryptophan helps to prevent or indirectly niacin helps to prevent pellagra these all symptoms were of pellagra so mr goldberg named so this why that this is why niacin is called pre, uh, preventing factor pellagra preventive factor of gold so again niacin is called pe- pellagra preventive factor coenzymes can be synthesized by amino acid tryptophan the coenzymes are nad and nadp they are involved in oxidation reduction reactions and natural source, uh, sources of niacin are liver yeast whole grain cereal pulses and deficiency of niacin leads to pellagra pellagra has four symptoms four d's remember it by four d's dermatitis diarrhea dementia and in loss in excessive uh, like in extreme cases death four d so pellagra is often seen in people who staple diet is corn or maize uh, niacin is not available in the tryptophan uh not available because tryptophan content is low in maize so we cannot convert tryptophan into niacin in the blood so this is all of this the patient showed symptoms of nicotinic uh the symptoms of symmetric cheek roughness which is dermatitis diarrhea and dementia dysfunction of nervous system there must be pellagra and pellagra is caused by lack of nicotinic acid and tryptophan i think that covers it Let's go to the next one. So, a 13-year-old boy complains of general weakness, dizziness, and tiredness. He is mentally retarded. A increased level of valine, isoleucine, and leucine in the blood and urine are observed. The so urine has specific smell. What is the diagnosis? So, valine, leucine, and isoleucine are branched chain amino acids. So, one small note that. branch chain amino acids are either glycogenic or ketogenic valine and isoleucine are glycogenic and isoleucine is also ketogenic and leucine is ketogenic so what happens is there is a disorder of the amino acid which is called as maple syrup urine disease so you see their metabolism valine leucine and isoleucine are first of all converted into their corresponding alpha keto acid by branch chain amino acid transaminases then uh, these Uh, corresponding alpha keto acids are converted into alpha beta unsaturated acyl coenzyme A thioester with the help of alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex so then they undergo their separate metabolism but during this metabolism if there is a enzyme defect of this enzyme branched branch chain uh, alpha keto acid dehydrogenase this one if there is a disorder of this enzyme this leads to a disease called as maple syrup urine disease now what happens in this disease uh, because this enzyme stops the metabolism over here so there is accumulation of branched chain amino acids and their keto acids in the urine and blood and the urine of affected individuals smells like maple syrup or burnt sugar so this is the disease i think that clears it let's go to the next one 35th is that increased breaking of vessels enamel and dentine destruction in scurvy patients are caused by disorder of collagen maturing so what state of modification of collagen is disordered in this a vitaminosis 
so scurvy is you all know deficiency of vitamin c so what is the role of vitamin c in collagen formation so vitamin c plays the role of coenzyme in the hydroxylation of proline and lysine while protocollagen is converted to collagen so this is a post -trans translational modification so see this is a proline molecule and with the help of enzyme prolyl hydroxylase and ascorbic acid or vitamin c is the coenzyme over here it is being converted into hydroxyproline a hydroxyl group is being attached to it so this is the stage where vitamin c plays the role of coenzyme and this reaction is catalyzed by lysyl hydroxylase for lysine and prolyl hydroxylase for proline and these both molecules which are formed are essential for collagen cross linking and the strength of the fiber correct understood good next one 36 is that a 62 year old female patient has developed cataract and secondary to the diabetes mellitus so what type of protein modification is observed in case of diabetic cataract so remember in diabetes mellitus there is high concentration of glucose in the body which we call as glucose toxicity now glucose toxicity can have many harmful effects first of all it has osmotic effects because high concentration of glucose or hyperglycemia has hyperosmolar effects so water is drawn from the cells into the extracellular fluids which called which causes dehydration of the body other is that there are free radicals formed which can cause beta cell damage to the liver so excessive free radicals are formed one of the effects or of the glucose toxicity and the third and most important is that it leads to glycation of proteins the proteins are uh, glycated with glucose there is a uh, the glucose molecules get attached to the proteins which leads to various complications like neuropathy nephropathy and retinopathy here you can see glucose is high in the blood hyperglycemia and normally if there is glucose in the blood it is used for energy production via hexokinase but if there is hyperglycemic situation hexokinase enzyme is it is saturated and glucose enters the pyloral pathway in pyloral pathway glucose is converted into sorbitol via the enzyme aldose reductase and this sorbitol gets accumulated in the lens causing a hyperosmotic effects which causes cataract so this is the mechanism and this this is due to glycation or glycosylation of proteins which is the answer in this case modification of observed is protein modification observed is glycosylation good 37th is that Aspirin has anti-inflammatory effect due to inhibition of COX enzyme or cyclooxygenase enzyme. So level of what biological active acids will be decreased. So remember this is the whole COX mechanism in which this is a cell membrane phospholipid bilayer and here we have arachidonic acid esterified in the membrane and what happens is this enzyme phospholipase A2 it calls the phospholipids to release arachidonic acid. So arachidonic acid is the next product in this cascade and this arachidonic acid is converted into a precursor of prostaglandins, prostaglandin G2 and prostaglandin G2 again with the help of enzymes COX enzyme. So COX, uh, COX1 and COX2 are enzymes which are present, COX1 is present uh, throughout the body and COX2 is present when there is inflammation. So aspirin and NSAIDs they stop this enzyme and hence they stop prostaglandin synthesis. COX2 enzyme is stopped by both uh, COX1 inhibitors like aspirin and non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs but also uh, selecoxib and other coxibs they selectively inhibit COX2. So this is why they are used because COX1 is also present in other parts of body like in the stomach and there uh, if you inhibit this COX enzyme it leads to inhibition of prostaglandin E2 formation. Uh, this E2 is responsible for maintaining the mucosa of stomach and uh, not causing acidity but if you this so these are the side effects of taking aspirin that it can cause gastric irritation but as cox2 is present only at the site of inflammation so if you give coxibs then 
uh, only cox2 will be inhibited and it will not to an, not show any gastric symptom so that is the whole mechanism inhibiting cox enzyme leads to inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis correct so prostaglandins are inhibited 38th question is simple in a lab experiment the leukocyte culture was mixed with staphylococci neutrophils or leukocytes engulfed and digested these bacterial cells so what is this what process called we have learned this from 10th standard that this process is called as phagocytosis correct i think no explanation is needed over here let's go to the next one 39th question is that examination of a patient revealed a typical presentations of collagenosis the path pathology is characterized by increase of the following urine index so remember i to, uh, told you in previous question in this video only that collagen formation is uh, the cross linking of collagen occurs with the help of hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine are essential for collagen cross linking so if collagen is being destroyed then there must be increased quantity of hydroxyproline in the urine simple 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 good let's go to the next one so 40th question is that marked increase of active mark increase of activity of mb forms of cpk and ldh1 were revealed on the examination of patient's blood so what is the most likely pathology so I told in the first question that these enzymes are increased during heart disorder like myocardial infarction let's see this in a little deep so lactate dehydrogenase you all know converts lactic acid to pyruvate and uh, the isoenzymes of ldh are present in various parts of the body so first and second isoenzyme are found in heart and erythrocytes third is found in brain and kidney and fourth and fifth is found in skeletal muscles and liver so these isoenzymes we write that they differ in the composition of structure so these have h subunit subunit and these have m subunits and intermediates have h h h m or the h2 m2 or h m3 so they differentiate on the basis of this unit and they have the same uh, re- they catalyze the same reaction but because of their subunit difference their km vmax and other catalytic values are different similarly creatinine kinase uh, catalyzes the conversion of phosphocreatinine to creatinine you all know phosphocreatinine is the storage form of energy or atp so i told you in that graph that first enzyme to get elevated after myocardial infarction attack within 6 to 18 hours is cpk cpk enzyme now here cpk has three isoenzymes bb form mb form and m2 form so in heart we have the cpk mb form which must be elevated in myocardial infarction within 6 to 18 hours so this is the earliest marker of myocardial infarction i think this clears it first is found in brain and third is found in skeletal muscle and second form of cpk is found in heart CPK or CK is the one of the same things. Creatinine kinase or creatinine phosphokinase. Good. So forty-first question is that untrained people often have muscle pains after sprints as a result of lactate accumulation. This might be caused by intensification of following biochemical process. So we learned lactate is produced by anaerobic glycolysis, and excess lactate can cause lactic acidosis. In that question. so over here the the process that is intensified is anaerobic glycolysis but here we they have only glycolysis so you have to remember that glycolysis has two form anaerobic and aerobic good next one the 42nd question is that a 16 year old patient was performed appendectomy a removal of appendix he was hospitalized for right lower quadrant abdominal pain within 18 hours the surgical specimen is edematous and erythematous infiltration by what of the following cells is the most typical for the process occurring here so you can see over here that this is inflammatory response and uh, during inflammatory response neuro uh, the leukocytes specifically neutrophils are forced to arrive 
so first of all in any inflammatory response local inflammatory agents are released like histamines and pgs then the capillary dilates and clotting begins and then chemotactic factors they ha- attract phagocytic cells and neutrophils are forced to arrive and then these phagocytes consume pathogens and the cell debris so in this case also where there is appendic append- appendicitis neutrophils should be forced to arrive and eosinophils basophils and lymphocytes and uh, they may arrive later or they don't actually the neutrophils are first inflammatory response cells and that's why the answer is neutrophils so next question is that atp synthesis is totally blocked in a cell how will the value of membrane rest potential change so remember to maintain rest membrane potential because during uh, a rest stage of a uh, cell the potassium channels and sodium leaky channels are open so the sodium leaks out and the potassium comes in but to maintain the quantity at a at a, a negative 90 or negative 60 depending on what membrane the essential part of the cell that maintains this negative membrane potential is sodium potassium pump so it is active it uses atp it throws three sodium out and takes two potassium in and in this process it takes atp so this sodium potassium pump is very essential for maintaining rest membrane potential we learn about this um, rest membrane potential and action potential in our next video in uh, physiology base or physiology base so just now remember that rest membrane potential is maintained with the help of sodium potassium pump which uses atp and if atp synthesis is impaired then the rest membrane potential will disappear correct good let's go to the next one the concentration of albumin in blood is lower than normal this leads to edema of tissues so what blood function is damaged so i told you in a previous question as well that albumin is the main protein of human blood plasma it makes a 50% of plasma proteins and what is its function its function is that it binds to water cations fatty acids hormones bilirubin thyroxine pharmaceuticals so albumin is like a big teddy bear who wants to hold on to stuff hug people and its main function related to proteins is that it maintains the oncoitic pressure of the blood oncoitic pressure of the blood is due to proteins so in if there is a less quantity of albumin it leads to decrease of oncoitic pressure and remember in kidneys oncoitic pressure is the pressure that opposes filtration so if there is high oncoitic pressure it means there are high albumin so this will lead the filtration being decreased but if there is low oncoitic pressure then it means albumin are low which is seen in this patient this will lead to increased filtration and oncoitic pressure will be decreased so i think that is understood that albumin help to maintain oncoitic pressure of the blood and we did this whole in the i think first 10 questions of the this series so let's go to the next one last question for today examination of a patient suffering from frequent hemorrhages in inner organs and mucous membranes revealed proline and lysine being included in collagen fibers third repeated question in this vitamin c uh, like field or function that vitamin c is role in vitamin in collagen formation anyway let's complete the question so impairment of their hydroxylation is caused by lack of following vitamin so remember vitamin c acts as a coenzyme for hydroxylation of proline and lysine so if there is a vitamin c dysfunction this will lead to impairment of collagen synthesis or impairment of hydroxylation of proline and lysine and this will cause some frequent hemorrhages and so on. i think that pretty much sums it up so this is all for today we completed 15 questions we are trying to pick up speed um we are going to finish with this pace as soon as possible and also we are going to start with physiology and pathophysiology base in the next couple of videos um we are trying to give you videos as quick as we can 
and we appreciate your support we appreciate your comments so thanks a lot for supporting the channel and it's been good so far and we are going to continue giving you solutions have messages and we are also planning to uh, put on videos related to ministry book so let's see how it goes uh, so it's been good see you in the next one